In this presentation, we'll talk about form in music and specifically about the use of um, a main section and a contrasting section, sometimes referred to as AB. Here's a song that you all know that has a verse. That would be like the A section. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. And to that A section, this is the B section. Likewise, for this verse, in the town where I was born, lived a man who sailed to sea. Has this chorus. We all live in a yellow submarine, yellow submarine, yellow. And then more recently, this A. Snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. Has this B. Let it go. Let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Let so verse chorus is a type of A, B form, capital letter A representing the first section and then B representing uh, its partner section. One way to show this would be uh, using geometric shapes. The red square represents the A section and the blue circle represents the B section. Um, in a more dramatic sense, we might say, um, say we were presenting a movie and had a hero, that's our A section. Uh, you know, Batman's great and all, but um, he doesn't seem as cool as when there's a villain, and that's our B section. So having um, the Joker uh, be the evil uh, villain uh, is the foil against which Batman appears to be even more heroic. So it's kind of like a protagonist and an antagonist is like the A and the B section. For many composers and writers, an A section just doesn't seem satisfying enough. Uh, for many listeners, that's true as well. Um, a B section, uh, a contrasting section, uh, seems to be um, desired. And you could think of some uh, reasons uh, for the motivation for uh, employing a B section, some I've already mentioned. I'm going to play a song that's probably familiar to you. Um, if you like, you could uh, do the uh, rhythms that are on the screen, pat, uh, the rest, pat, rest, pat, rest, pat, rest, pat for the A section, and then rest, clap, clap, rest, clap, rest, clap, clap, rest, clap for the B section. It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Why is that such a successful thing in popular music? Well, first of all, it's not just in popular music. Uh, on the slide now, you can see the uh, melody at the opening of John Williams' um, main theme for the Star Wars movies. Uh, this harkens back, I believe, to the 80s, uh, but we still know the, the tune. Um, they've become sort of part of the Star Wars um, franchise. And you'll notice that um, the structure uh, of this theme is an A and B. There's a nice eight measure A section and then a nice uh, complementary eight measure B section. That's interesting that it's symmetrical, you know, four measures in the first phrase uh, here, and then four measures in the second phrase uh, for the A section, and then four measures of the first phrase, and then four measures of the second phrase. Uh, you'll hear a brief intro, but let's listen to this Star Wars uh, melody. And also uh, pay attention to what's different uh, in the A section, things like um, the type of melody, uh, the instruments used, the volume, all sorts of uh, contrast between A and B. This is our introduction. Okay, 
So think about it. What is different between the A and the B section? Well, for one thing, you may have noticed that the A section was nice and loud, and then the B section was contrastingly soft. So that's the difference of uh, what musicians would call in dynamics, or we might just say in volume. There's also a difference in instruments used in the A section. There was a lot of brass instruments playing this heroic main theme, whereas in the B section, the strings took over um, and um, had a contrasting theme. Also in the A section, there were large melodic leaps, like those I'm circling right now. Leaps of almost an octave uh, and a fifth and things like that, much more angular and disjunct. In the B section, the melody was much smoother and stepwise. So a lot of contrast between A and B. If you listen to the recording that I just played, you'll notice that at the end of the B section, there was actually a return to the A section. And it turns out that's a very human desirable thing. You know, we have something presented to us. After a while, we get, we get that and, and we get kind of, not bored, but you know, we, we've, we've gotten the main idea and, and we're ready for something contrasting that is a surprise to us or at least is um, fresh. And then after hearing that contrast, uh, we return to A and it's all the more satisfying for having been away from the A and dwelt with the B for a while. Um, so ABA is a type of a symmetrical form that I I don't think it's an exaggeration to say, you know, 80, 90 percent of all music, um, at least in Western uh, music, uh, is some variation of ABA form. But it's not just in, in uh, music, it's in all of the arts. Um, in architecture, for instance, this uh, facade of a building uh, clearly has an ABA form. If you look at a lot of the ways um, visual art is composed, the, the, the way objects are arranged, it's frequently you can find this, this type of um, ABA. Certainly in drama, uh, where a protagonist is a character and an antagonist is a counter character, um, and then there's some kind of conflict between the two, and they work it all out, or they overcome, or something happens, and then there's the return to the, to the opening state, um, ABA. Let's listen to the Star Wars theme. Um, notice the crescendo that I've uh, indicated at the end of the B section that really prepares you for the return of A. This is our introduction. And section A. music by John Williams. So why have so many composers and songwriters used ABA form? Why does this form work? Again, you could think about that question. I think there's a lot of answers, a lot of correct answers. I think it all relates back to our humanness and, and what satisfies us as human beings. Uh, there's a type of form called sonata form that is used by a lot of concert art music composers, a lot of classical composers. Uh, sometimes it's called sonata allegro form because uh, mostly um, music written in sonata form is fast. Uh, the opening movement of almost any classical or romantic period uh, symphony that you would hear by Beethoven, by uh, Mozart, um, uh, by by Mendelssohn, um, and on and on and on, Brahms, etc. Uh, most of those opening movements of those um, symphonies are sonata form. And um, even though there are many more ground level details than just ABA, um, their, uh, sonata form is basically an elaboration of ABA form. And uh, the uh, terms that you see uh, in this graph, expo, DEV and RECAP stand for Exposition, Development, and Recapitulation. And so each of those sections has um, formal implications, but essentially uh, some ideas are presented in the A section, 
Um, there's some con something contrasting that's done with those ideas in the B section, and then the A section represents a return of the opening. So sonata allegro form is an uh, elaboration of this ABA form. Song form, um, verse chorus is A B form, and then when the A returns, it usually returns with its B. So the verse and the chorus sort of become a pair, uh, and we start to hear the verse chorus instead of as A and B. We hear it as a unit, a formal unit, AB. <laughs> and then when the verse and chorus are repeated, AB returns again. So at that point, the listener uh, starts to associate the verse and the chorus with um, a predictable entity and is ready for even more contrast. And that's why a bridge is used. A bridge would be a third section, a, a contrasting material. So I've labeled it C. Uh, after the bridge, though, now that we've been away from the A and the B for a while, it's it's uh, really satisfying to return to it. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? So as you're listening to the bridge, it's it's new material, but uh, it usually is the purpose of the bridge is to lead you back to something from the opening A or B. Uh, often it's the, just just the chorus. Uh, some other formal sections that we might see. Um, in song form include an introduction, uh, you know, some things just set up the song, and then an outro, uh, some closing material. Um, in classical music, we might call that a coda or a codetta. And that is song form.